Britain's oldest men will both turn 110 this week, but one will no longer accept birthday cards from the Queen because there is no point. Robert Wayton will turn 110 on Thursday. He was born in Hull on March 29, 1908 and survived both world wars and lived in five countries in his long life. The centenarian was the middle of seven children and has three children of his own, ten grandchildren and twenty-five great-grandchildren. Mr. Wayton shares the honor as Britain's oldest man with Alfred Smith of Perth, Scotland. The pair, who were both born when Edward VII was king, made contact three years ago and have been sending birthday cards to each other ever since. Neither of them are aware which one is the oldest. Mr. Wayton saw a story about Mr. Smith, who has two children, in 2015 and wrote to him. He said, I have already sent my card off to Alfie and I am sure I will receive mine eventually. His granddaughter is the one that is able to write and she sends the letters to me. I spoke to him last at Christmas and I hope he receives my card in the next few days. It is extraordinary that the two oldest men in Britain were born on the same day. On his 109th birthday, Mr. Smith, a former farmer, told STB, I can't just do everything that I'd like to do. I'm very careful when I walk. If we go out, I never thought I'd reach this age but I feel very good for 109. I don't have any pains and I sleep well. I'm not worried very much about anything. He added, will I live to 110? I would like to. Mr. Smith was given a certificate of long service from the Church of Scotland last year, right Reverend Russell Barr, moderator of Church of Scotland said at the time of all the many people I have met during my year as moderator, Alfred Smith is one of the most remarkable. At 109 years old he retains a lively sense of humor, a continuing interest in life, including the life of the church, and he is a great storyteller. It was a privilege to meet him and some of his family and to offer him my warmest congratulations. Mr. Smith was born in Inverjowry, Scotland, the fifth of six sons. He emigrated to Canada, along with four of his brothers, in 1927 but returned after five years and then worked as a lorry driver. During the Second World War Mr. Smith was in the Home Guard, and married Isabel when he was 29. They raised two children, together but Mrs. Smith died 15 years ago, aged 97. Mr. Wayton, who was born before women had to vote, the Pearl Harbor attack, the sinking of the Titanic, and the Russian Revolution now lives alone in Alton, Hampshire. The great-grandfather has started turning down birthday cards from the Queen after receiving too many. However, Mr. Wayton says he would begin welcoming cards from the royal family if there was a change of monarch during his lifetime. He said, I am not having any more from the Queen. There is no point having one every year. I have been sent quite a lot since I turned 100, but it is just another day for me. I celebrate all days the same now. Mr. Wayton said his final card from Her Majesty was for his 107th birthday which showcases her smiling directly at the camera. I want to remember her by that picture, she looks very relaxed. On Thursday, he will join the elite list of British supercentenarians, describing people who have lived to at least 110. The gerontology research group, that validated their age claims says that have been about 140 people reached the age of 110 in British history. There are five living British supercentenarians, the oldest of whom is Bessie Camp from Rotherham, born June 20, 1904, aged 113. As of Thursday, there will be two more on the list. Mr. Wayton is still mobile and attends coffee mornings and clubs with other local people. He added, I walk to Waitrose a couple of times a week for my weekly shop. I only need to pay £5 per day for my food. I do a lot of speaking, I go to clubs and schools to talk about my life and what it was like during the war. Unsure what the secret is to his longevity, Mr. Wayton has lived in Japan, Taiwan, Canada and the USA in his lifetime. While in Hong Kong in 1937 he married his wife Agnes who he met while teaching English in Taiwan. With his wife, who passed away in 1997, Mr. Wayton spent much of their retirement volunteering as marriage counselors and helping at youth groups. He was a refugee in Canada during World War II as his family were unable to return to Britain in 1939. Mr. Wayton's ability to speak Japanese meant he was hired by the British Political Warfare Mission to decipher enemy messages, and also worked to disrupt the morale of the Japanese. He added, I have seen the whole world fall apart twice. The world is in a state of uncertainty right now. Nobody knows what is going to happen about Brexit, Russia or in Syria. It is a very uncertain future. I am very well aware that a lot of people don't reach my age. A lot of people don't even reach 50. They are the ones who ought to get the attention, not myself. I have never faced starvation like some of them.
Mr. Waiton does not consider his age to be an accomplishment and says each year is just as important as the last, adding, it is not something that I have worked for. It is just something that comes around, sort of like measles. Tell me where the freaks at.